Let's go. 
dito sa lupa tulad ng sa langit. Dumating na wa ang iyong kaharian, matupad na wa ang iyong kalooban. Dito sa lupa tulad ng sa langit. Happy Sunday, Life Giver Church. Let's all worship God this morning. Declare the mighty of His power. Come on.
God, what we need, Lord God, is your fresh touch in our hearts, God. As we worship you this morning, we draw near to you. For you said in your word, you will draw near to us when we draw near to you. We need you, God. And as we lift this song to you, God, we feel your extraordinary presence in this place. We lift you up. Oh, Jesus. And can't go back to the beginning. And can't control what tomorrow will be. But I know here in the middle is a place where you promise to be. I'm not enough unless you come. Would you meet me here again? This all I want is all you are. Would you meet me here again?
as I walk now through the valley Let your love rise above everything Like the sun shaping the shadow In my weakness your glory appears Nations and kingdoms, Lord, you are greater 
mightier. We declare you're all powerful, God. Step up a song of praise and sing. And hallelujah.
thousand years ago. We believe her that today you're delivering us and you're doing great things among us. Praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Thank you, Life Giver Worship, for that powerful and anointed praise and worship. Amen. Wow. Ayan naman. Good morning to all Life Giver churches and of course to our respective viewers. I am Pastor Dovi from Life Giver Cebu and I welcome you to our unified online service. Kaya sabihin mo sa katabi mo kung may katabi ka, sabihin mo welcome. I want to start by asking you this question. Sino dito gusto ng maraming pagpapala? Wow, yes. Bakit ganon pag blessings lahat tayo masaya? Of course because all of us want an upgraded life. We all want to experience abundance of life. Siyempre, lalo na sa sitwasyon natin ngayon. Sa gitna ng crisis na kinakaharap natin, we want to experience abundance. Ha? Nasa crisis na nga, magbibigay pa? Wala na nga pumapasok ng income sa amin, magbibigay pa? Na wala na nga kami ng trabaho, magbibigay pa? Now, let me tell you this. Generosity will never be an issue of money, but it is an issue of the heart. This was shown by the Macedonian churches, as Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 2. Sabi ni Paul, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Now, the Macedonian churches po had given money though they were poor, and they had sacrificially given to the impoverished believers in Jerusalem more than pa sa ine-expect ni Apostle Paul. Although they were poor themselves, kahit po mahirap sila, they wanted to help. And sila din po yung may pangangailangan. Sila din ay nasa crisis, but they chose to give. And according to the verse, their overflowing joy and extreme poverty, ah, Weld up in rich generosity. Now, the amount we give is not as important as why and how we give. Masarap, masaya na ikaw ang nabibigyan. Nabibigyan ng relief goods, nabibigyan ng assistance or pera from the government or kaya pagkain. Yes, masaya na tayo ay napagpala, of course. Pero I want to tell you, mas masaya pa din kapag tayo ay naging pagpapala para sa iba. Katulad ng Macedonian churches, they were filled with overflowing joy na nagresulta sa generosity. Joy na di nakadepende sa pera. Joy na hindi nakabase sa estado mo sa buhay, but joy na nakabase sa grasya ng Diyos. And their poverty did not hinder them to be a blessing to others, especially to the believers in Jerusalem. Actually, sinabi po that they gave more than pasakaya nilang ibigay. Amidst of crisis, ha? amidst of extreme poverty. Pag sinabi pong extreme, it is to the highest degree ha? o kaya maximum level. Sabihin na natin na sobrang walang-wala na sila. Walang income, walang trabaho, nag-close ang business, wala nang makain. Pero sinabi po sa kasunod ng mga verses, nagmakaawa pa sila na magbigyan sila ng pagkakataon na makapagbigay, na makapag-share sa iba even po na sila mismo ay nakakaranas ng krisis. Wow! Even Paul attested to this. 
in verses 3 to 5, ang sabi doon, For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it of their own free will. They begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift for the believers in Jerusalem. They even did more than we had hoped for their action was to give themselves to the Lord and to us just as God wanted them to do. Amazing, no? Their generosity amidst crisis was a result of them giving their lives first to God and then to others just as God wanted them to do. First week pa lang ng quarantine, lahat po ay nagulat sa maraming pagbabago. Marami ang naapektuhan sa work, nag-close ang mga negosyo, a lot of adjustments, especially po sa finances. Malaki din po ang adjustment ko as a full-timer, especially that we need to support our parents financially para sa mga gamot pang maintenance nila while in quarantine. Iniisip ko na din ang filet contribution ko. Wala pa akong nababayaran. Iniisip ko na din ang mabayarin sa dorm, monthly bills at iba pa. Pero despite sa lahat ng obligations ko financially, every week po, I make it sure na binibigay ko pa din sa church ang dapat kay Lord. My tithes, my offering, even pledges. At never po nag-fail si Lord to provide for me. May biglang nagsisend ng pera sa Gcash at bank account ko. May sumagot na din sa PhilHealth contribution ko for the whole year na hindi ko po inaasahan. I was able to give to my parents sa share ko sa pang-maintenance nila together with my sisters. At lahat ng monthly bills namin ay may pambayad na kahit pa may moratorium na binigay ang gobyerno. Masaya po kasi nasusustain ang, ang lahat ng pangangailangan ko sa family ko, even my bills. Pero bakit parang may kulang? Then I remember the Macedonian churches. How they gave themselves to God and to others. Yun may others pala. Masaya na pinagpapala ka pero huwag sana nating kalimutan na pinagpala tayo ni Lord para maging pagpapala sa iba, lalong-lalo na sa mga nangangailangan. Masarap sa pakiramdam that you were an answer to their prayers. Now, kaya naman when Puso Movement and Life Giver Church extended help to 112 households in Cebu last week, excited kaming na malengke at nagripak ng mga gulay. Sobrang sarap po sa pakiramdam na makita ang mga ngiti nila na pagkabigay namin kita-kita po ang pag-asa despite the crisis that we are facing. Wow, so priceless. In that moment, I told myself na this will not end here. It became a trigger point to touch more lives. Kaya tuloy-tuloy po ang pag-campaign namin dito sa Cebu. Sa tulong ng apat na leaders na kasama ko, nag-ambag-ambag kami ng pera to buy groceries to 23 families sa church namin. Di lang po yan, we were able to, to touch the lives of our barangay workers, sundalo at tanod na nagpapantay sa daan. Nagbigay din kami ng pagkain ng washable face masks. And di lang po sa akin nag-flow ang desire to touch others but it flowed to our leaders. Una apat lang kami pero unti-unting nahihikayat ang iba sa mga life groups namin to give and touch lives. Again, generosity is never an issue of money but an issue of the heart. Hindi mahalaga kung konti lang yung pera mo but what is important is your puso. Truly, it is better to give than to receive. Kaya po, I encourage everyone to give first to the Lord and then to others. If you are from Life Giver Camias, Life Giver BGC, Elliptical, Marikina, Manresa, or Katipunan, you may go to www.lifegiverchurch.ph slash give for your giving. For Life Giver Manila, PNB account will be flashed on your screen or you may go to Life Giver Manila Facebook page. And for the rest of Life Giver Churches, please refer to your respective Facebook pages or you may contact or message your lead pastor. Happy giving! Amen! Yes, I know we're all excited to hear the Word of God. Kaya naman, prepare your Bibles, prepare your notebooks, even your pen, and your loudest Amen! And here is Rev. Fady Santiago Mendoza for the Word of God. Hello po! Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. At alam ko po na excited po kayo na ito, linggo na naman. I know that you are looking forward to this day na ma-worship natin ang Panginoon together kahit online with our families and of course to hear God's word of of encouragement. Amen. And, and I thank God for this opportunity to speak to you again and I'm so excited to preach to you 
because I want to open your eyes to an opportunity of a lifetime. Can you say that again? Opportunity of a lifetime. Nasa harap man natin ngayon is an opportunity of a lifetime. You know, extraordinary problems lead to extraordinary opportunities. Especially to God's church. Kung akala mo na ang problema na ito ay nilimitahan ng galaw ng Panginoon, nilimitahan ng salita ng Diyos, at nilimitahan ng gospel. Dahil nga nagsarado ang mga simbahan, nakakamali po kayo. Actually, okay, this extraordinary problem, sabi ko nga kanina, leads to an extraordinary opportunity. Tingnan niyo po ito ha. The world is experiencing not just an epidemic. Okay? It is experiencing a pandemic different than anything before. So, pag sinabi mong pandemic, okay, ang tinatamaan po ay buong mundo, hindi lang po buong bansa. So, buong mundo po ngayon ang takot, na takot na mahawa sa COVID-19. Buong mundo ngayon ang anxious na mawala ng trabaho dahil sa pagbagsak ng ating ekonomiya. At ang ilan ay malungkot dahil hindi na sila makakapag-participate sa mga malalaking gatherings, kagaya ng church gatherings. But panic is actually purposeful because it is a time where people are most open to the gospel. Suddenly, Okay, ang mga tao ay bukas na no, willing to talk about God, willing to talk about life, willing to talk about death, willing to talk about hope. And we must take this extraordinary opportunity to point people to Jesus because the gospel cannot be quarantined. Sige po, let's pray. Lord, maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon, sa time na naman na kami ay, ay, ay makikinig ng iyong salita. Nawa, Lord God, buksan mo ang aming mga puso para maintindihan yung gusto mo maiparating sa amin. Nire-review po namin, Lord God, lahat ng galaw ng kalaban. Uh, galaw ng kalaban na i-out of focus kami, Lord God, sa will mo, sa movement mo. Tulungan mo kami, Panginoon, sumabay sa gusto mo mangyari. Tulungan mo kami sumabay, Panginoon, sa purpose mo, Lord God, sa amin, Lord God, at bakit mo inalaw itong pandemic po na ito. Gumalaw po kayo sa amin today. We believe that we will have a empowering time with you, Lord God. Holy Spirit, move in this place. Thank you, God. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. I mean, today I'll be sharing about the gospel cannot be quarantined. Can you say that again? The gospel cannot be quarantined. If there was a good contagion, it's the gospel. In the book of Acts po, kung saan kay nagumpisa ang outbreak ng Ebanghelyo, makikita natin na ang mabuting balita ay kumalat from Jerusalem to Rome in just Two years. Walang social media, walang airplanes, at wala ring website. Okay, walang website ang gospel, www.gospel.com. Wala po. Pero ito po ay kumalat. Amen. The gospel was spread from person to person and the world po was forever changed. And so, pwede ang tanong mo ngayon, paano kakalat ang gospel? E eh, naka-quarantine tayo. Magandang tanong po yung papaano kakalat ang gospel sa panahon ngayon. Sabi mo, it's an opportunity of a lifetime no to share the gospel dahil dito po sa COVID-19, papaano makakalat ang gospel kung, maka, kung naka-quarantine tayo? I'm sorry po, but the gospel can't be quarantined. The gospel can't be chained. The gospel can't be locked down. Amen. In 2 Timothy 2 verse 9, in 2 Timothy 2 verse 9, sabi po rito, And because I preach the good news 
I am suffering and have been chained like a criminal, but the word of God cannot be chained. Ulitin ko po ulit ang ganda. Sabi niya, sabi ni Apostle Paul, And because I preach the good news, I am suffering and have been chained like a criminal, but the word of God cannot be chained. Ito pong verse po na ito ay naisulat ni Apostle Paul sa mga huling buhay po niya. When he was in prison in a cold dungeon, chained like a common criminal under Emperor Nero, Emperor Nero. Sa panahon na ito, actually po kawawa ang mga Kristiyano because mentally unstable po yung emperor at mainit po ang dugo sa kanila. Kay sila actually ang sinisisi o tinuturo na dahilan ng pagsulog ng ilang parte ng Rome. Kay dahil dito, sila ay kinukulong, sinusunog at pinapatay. So ang sabi ni Paul, okay, kaya nyo akong ikulong, but not the gospel. It knows no prison. It knows no chain. Alam niya na kapag verbally nirelease ito, it has a power that could not be stopped by jails. It has the power that could not be uh, stopped by guards. Oh, kay ng mga evil emperors. Wow po, yan po ang gospel. Na gusto ko po rumi- mag-rewind po tayo sa isa ding imprisonment ni Paul. Sa Rome din ito nangyari. Okay, he was imprisoned for two years. Nako, two years. Two years na bumabad si Paul sa loob ng kulungan na yun. Nako, bababad si Paul. Ano kaya mangyayari? Amen. Ito po ang sabi niya. Philippians 1:12 to 14 Sabi rito, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, It has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of my brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and they're all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Amen. Actually, ayon po sa historical accounts, may approximately 10,000 soldiers po kay sa palace guard kung saan nakakulong si Paul. At ni-reach out ni Paul ang mga Roman soldiers na born again ang ilan sa mga ito. In turn, itong mga na born again began to talk about the gospel to their co-soldiers. Secretly, no? Bulungan, kwentuhan. Amen. Okay, soon, alam nyo po ba na yung buong palace guard had been exposed to the contagious good news of the gospel. Wow! Amen! Amen! In addition, in addition po, sabi po ni Paul, it inspired many okay, Christians, okay, from the body of Christ to be contagious carriers of the gospel too without fear. Si Paul nga nakakulong, nagpipreach ng gospel at kumalat ng gospel at madami na born again sa loob ng kulungan. How much pa kaya tayo? Let's preach the gospel without fear. Yan ang sabi ng mga Kristiyano at the, that time at na-inspire sila sa ginagawa ni Paul. Now I'm sure you're getting the connection here already. Alam ko naiintindihan niyo yung sinasabi ko. Stay at home orders from our government may hold us back. Okay, stay at home orders from our government may hold us back, but the gospel cannot be quarantined. Actually po itong contagious message po na ito, okay, best sp- spreads, okay, in crisis. Itong contagious message na ito, best siyang nagsispread in times of crisis. Sa mga persecutions, problems, and pandemics can actually end up in helping to spread the gospel faster and further than ever before. Amen. So this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Amen. 
Amen. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, hindi makukulong ang gospel. Hindi maka-quarantine ang gospel. Hindi mapoposasan ang gospel. Makikita po natin yan. Isa pang storya po in the book of Acts. In Acts 8, 1 to 4. In Acts 8, 1 to 4. Ang sabi po dito, Amen. Rewind ulit. Rewind po tayo ulit. In Acts 8, sabi dyan, On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul, si Saul po, okay, hindi pa po siya born again dito, si Paul. I'm talking about Paul kanina, no? The one who was in chains for Christ. Okay, siya po yung nagpo-persecute at this time. Hindi pa po siya born again at this time. Okay, Saul pa ang kanyang pangalan. Sabi dyan, but Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he would drag off both men and women and put them in prison. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. And so, makikita po natin dito, pinapatay ang mga Kristiyano. Amen. At sila'y pinapersecute. Okay? And because of this persecution, okay, all the more, yung gospel po ay kumalat. Grabe, hindi po, hindi po talaga siya mapipigilan. Hindi po talaga siya matatali. As a matter of fact, sabi ko nga kanina, it will spread best in times of persecution, in times of problems, in times like this. 1949, when Christians In China, when 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 Christian missionaries in China were expelled after communists took over China, one million palang po dante ang born again Christians sa China. Okay, sila po na persecute ng super lupet. Ngayon po, alam nyo po ba na more than two hundred fifty million na ang Christians sa China. Kahit bawal po sila. Magkaroon ng large gatherings. Amen. And secretly, nagkakaroon po sila ng maliliit na Bible study. Sa, di po natin alam kung saan. Amen. They are super persecuted. But, amen, the gospel cannot be chained. And because of that, kumalat po ang gospel ngayon sa China. Hindi po talaga mapupusasan. Paulit-ulit na po ako. Hindi po talaga mapoposasan at makukulong at ang gospel. It will thrive and survive even in the midst of persecution. Let's talk about the Black Plague. When history's ultimate pandemic, the Black Plague, devastated Europe in mid-1300s, it, it turned to a ground level turning to God by many Europeans. It also led to a growing dissatisfaction among how religion handled the plague and those who got infected by it. Patanong sila, amen, sa Catholic Church at the time. ba? Diba? Simbahan ba talaga itong simbahan namin? Bakit? Kasi nagmamadali yung mga pare na umali sa area na dapat nagmamadali silang tumulong dahil nga simbahan sila. At dahil doon, napapatanong ang mga Kristiyano. Diba? Patungkol sa kanila, sa simbahan, sa relihiyon na kanilang sinalihan. Kapatid, totoo nga na sa mga ganitong pandemic, tayo napapatanong eh kung ang ginagawa ba natin o ginagawa ba ng simbahan ay kaaya-aya sa Diyos. Kasi sa mga ganitong shaky, naghahanap ang tao ng isang matibay na pundasyon na masasandalan eh. At nakita nila parang may problema sa Catholic Church. Parang they're not living the Bible. So after 200 years, 200 years, Martin Luther rose and he declared publicly the injustices of Roman Catholic Church. He stirred up what already is brewing in the hearts of many about the church. And much of This discontent was due to handling of the plague. Amen. Kaya nung nung 200 years ago, kaya panonoorin po talaga tayo ng tao sa panahon ngayon at dito magkakaalaman kung totoo tayong followers ni Christ. 
As a result of that, reformation was swept across Europe and the Protestants rose up as a faith alone in Christ alone force that is still trumpeting today. Kapatid, we must maximize this once in a lifetime opportunity. Why? Dahil ang gospel po ay hindi maka-quarantine. You can't lock it down. And and it can bring about reformation if we will just take advantage of this play. Amen. Palapakan po natin ang Panginoon. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what to do in this trying time? Amen. What to do in this trying time? So I presented to you the power of the gospel that it cannot be chained and it spreads best okay in times of pandemic in times of persecution in times of problems so ano ang dapat natin gawin as a church we need to take advantage of this time ano dapat natin gawin as a church apat na bagay lang po and then i'm done number 1 is this what to do in this trying time first is be infected by the gospel first first be infected by the gospel first kung ang gospel ay hindi maka-quarantine pati po ang carriers nito ay hindi rin hindi ko sinasabing lumabas tayo at magwala okay at at ating suwayin ang gobyerno ang sinasabi ko don't let this lockdown lock you down because as we've studied the nature of the gospel you can chain it it will spread like a contagious virus and people will be infected by it kung dati nga walang social media kumalat ito Diba? Kung dati nga walang airplane, pero kumalat ito. Kung dati nga walang mga website, kumalat ito. Okay? How much pa ngayon na meron ng means like social media to spread it? I want to tell you that those who were infected will infect others. My question is this, infected ka pa ba ng gospel? Infected ka pa ba kapatid? Kasi lahat ng infected, hindi pwedeng, hindi mang-infect. Lahat ng may, may, may Kristo sa buhay niya, hindi pwedeng, hindi siya nakakahawa. Those who are saved will save others. Those who are changed by the gospel will change others. Amen. Amen. And so, number one, we need to make sure that we are infected by the gospel. Number two, number two is that we need to be sanitized and mobilized. Number one, kailangan ma-infect ka muna ng gospel. Pangalawa, okay, para tayo magamit okay, sa, sa, sa moment po na ito, we need to be sanitized and mobilized. Nakakalungkot po, we live in a time na sugar-coated na ang gospel using it as a license to sin. Kasi may grace naman. Amen. Kaya nasusuka na po ako sa mga napapanood ko sa social media na sugar-coated. Amen. Extreme grace. Amen. Ang kanilang tinuturo. Sugar-coated ang gospel. Nakakalimutan po natin that the gospel is about turning to sin and turning to Jesus who died for us. Ang kamatayan ni Jesus ay hindi ka pinalaya gumawa ng kasalanan, pero pinalaya ka sa kasalanan at sa consequence ng kasalanan. So it's about salvation and sanctification. 2 Timothy 2, 19-21 Sabi dito, Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm. Sealed with this inscription, ha? Sabi niya, the Lord knows those who are His. And everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. Those who confesses, okay, the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. 
tinuloy po niya, mamaya papaliwanag ko, tinuloy niya, in a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes and some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. So sinasabi po ng whole text that if you are really His, if you are really saved, you will turn from wickedness. If you are really infected by the gospel, you will hate sin. You will turn from sin. And if you are sanitized, you can be used by the master for special purposes. You can be useful. You can be prepared anytime to share the gospel. So, ibig sabihin, ang tatak daw na tayo ay ligtas ay yung tayo ay tumalikod na sa ating mga kasalanan. At yung mga taong tumalikod na sa kanila mga kasalanan, yung mga taong na sanitize, yung mga taong na sanctify ng gospel, sila po ang gagamitin ng Panginoon for special purposes. Magiging useful po sila and they can be prepared anytime to share the gospel. Liliyab na lang sila Amen, ang hindi nila pinipilit. Why? Because sila mismo okay, ay na-infect ng gospel. And so this is the time to be sanitized. If you want to be used by God in this moment, we need to be sanitized. James 4, 8, sabi dito, Come near to God and He will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. Okay, God wants us to wash our hands and purify our hearts. He wants us to be sanitized so that we can be mobilized for the gospel. And so let's have a searching right now. In Psalms 139, 23, 24, sabi dito, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So search your heart magtanong ka, na-infect ba ako mismo ng gospel? Totoo bang natalikuran ko na ang aking mga kasalanan? Totoo bang ginagawa ko? Oo, totoo ba itong ginagawa ko para sa Panginoon o ginagawa ko lamang siya para sa sarili ko? O ginagawa ko ba mga bagay-bagay para sa pangarap ko at hindi para sa pangarap ni Lord? Nakafocus ba ako sa temporal o eternal? Do I really love souls o pandagdag lang sila sa expansion ng kaharian na tinatayo ko para sa pangalan ko? If you want to be used mightily by the Lord, then you should be sanitized. You should be infected by the gospel. This time of quarantine is not just for reaching out, it's also for looking in, for you to be used mightily time na to be sanitized. Amen. Number three. Okay. Number three. Ani number one? Be infected first by the gospel. Number two, be sanitized and mobilized. Number three, demonstrate the gospel. This is the best time with all my heart to demonstrate the gospel. Hindi nyo napansin, sabi ko, demonstrate, hindi pa share. Hindi pa share. Because this is the best time to demonstrate the gospel. Kasi ang gospel hindi lang kwento. Isa siyang karanasan at gusto ng Panginoon na iparanas natin ito sa iba. Amen. Before we share the gospel, let's demonstrate it. Because I believe love is the bridge. And love is not a noun, it is a verb. It is something that is seen. Amen. This is something we do. Kaya si Jesus Christ, hindi lang siya bumaba to preach. Okay? Hindi lang siya bumaba to die. Amen. But He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He hugged the leprous. Sa panahon na pinandidirian ang mga may ketong, 
niyakap niya ito at sabi niya, willing akong pagalingin kayo. At ito ang command niya po sa atin. In Matthew 25, 35, 40, sabi niya, For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we feed you or, or thirst and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invited you in or needing clothes and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you whatever you did for one of the list of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Amen. And so, This is the best time. Ang daming takot, ang daming anxious, ang daming may sakit, ang daming gutom, ang daming walang pera, ang daming gumagapang na okay, sa gutom. Now is the best time to demonstrate the gospel. Now is the best time. Alam nyo ba, okay, na all throughout history, pag-aralan po natin ang mga plagues na naitala sa history, alam nyo ba na Christians set the pace in caring for the hurting. They cared for those who are hurt. Amen. They feed, fed the hungry. That's why, pambihira po, ang dami-dami na born again. Why? Because yung mga Kristiyano ay naging Kristiyano nung panahon na kailangan nilang maging kristyano. When everyone else rushes away out of fear, Christians rush in out of love. Time to demonstrate the gospel in your neighbors, in your communities, oras na to demonstrate it. Amen? Maghanap po tayo ng mga matutulungan. Amen? Even ang mga kapitbahay ninyo, matagal na na kilala kayo na kapitbahay ninyo na kristyano. Amen. At hindi sumasama sa inyo sa simbahan. Pero ito na yung oras to demonstrate the gospel. Amen. By, 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 by taking care of them. Amen. By feeding them. By praying for them. By listening to them. Amen. Now is the time. Number three and the last is this. Share it. Share it. Share it. Hindi lang food ang need ng tao, but spiritual food. Hindi lang physical healing ang need ng tao, but spiritual healing. Hindi lang salvation from COVID ang kailangan ng tao, but salvation from hell. Ano ngayon kung sila'y gumaling sa covid ano ngayon kung sila ay napakain? Okay? Kung ang mga kaluluwa naman nila ay bound to hell. Now is the time to demonstrate the gospel. Amen. And to share it. People are, are vulnerable at this time. People are available. Dito po tayo pumasok. Demonstrate the gospel. Demonstrate the gospel. And share the gospel to your friends, to your neighbors, okay? Pwedeng virtually, okay? Pwedeng personally, okay? Do it. Start praying for them. Look for opportunities to bring up the gospel to those you encounter, whether publicly or virtually. We live in an extraordinary time and we have an extraordinary opportunity to share the gospel. Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. This is our time. This is our moment. Amen? Palakpakan po natin si Lord. In Matthew 5.16, lastly, sabi niya, in the same way, Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the time 
to let our light shine before others so that they may see our good deeds and glorify God. Time po natin ngayon. Christians, we are born for such a time as this. It's time to rise up. It's time to be the church. Amen. In these crucial times. This this pandemic po will be a history. Definitely. Matatapos po ito and it will be a history. What will history say about what the church did during this time? Ano masasabi ng history about sa ginawa natin during this time? Amen. Oras na natin ito maramdaman. Oras na nating tumayo. Amen. Now is our time. I want you to close your eyes right now. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna pray for you. Amen. Close your eyes and today, gusto kong ipakita sa yon itong opportunity of a lifetime. Minsang tinanong ko si Lord, sabi ko, Lord, akala ko it's harvest time. Ang sagot sa akin ni Lord, yes, it's harvest time. E paano yan, nakulong kami. Oo, nakulong ka, pero hindi makukulong ang gospel. I am making the, the world harvest ready. And I am commissioning you to spread it like a virus. And you can spread it. You will figure it out. You will figure it out. And people will see me in you. And they will glorify me. And they will accept Jesus Christ through you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for you. Lord, I pray for the church today. Lord God, Una, tulungan mo po ang simbahan, Panginoon, na linisin ang sarili niya. Kung may mga bagay pa na hindi kaaya-aya sa iyong harapan, Panginoon, Lord God, linisin mo ang iyong simbahan. Lord God, wash us, Lord. Lord, sanitize us. This is a time kung saan, Lord God, binibitawan na namin ang sarili namin mga agenda. Binibitawan na namin ang mga, mga selfish namin mga pangarap. And today, Lord God, we are coming to you and saying, Lord, ang buhay namin, hawak mo na. Hawakan mo ang buhay namin at gamitin mo kami. And today, God, Lord God, we are receiving empowerment from you, God. We are receiving an anointing from you, Lord God, to rise up for such a time as this, Lord God, to be your hands, to be your feet, and to be your voice. We're not gonna back down, Lord God. Hindi kami aatras, Lord God, pero kami ay aabante, Lord God. Dahil panahon na namin, matagal na namin gusto mawin ang community namin, baka ito na yung panahon na ang com- community namin ay madala namin sa iyo because of the acts that we will do for them. And God, provide for us. Lord God, wala kaming pera. Lord God, um, may limitasyon kami ni hindi nga kami makalabas ng bahay. But alam namin that the gospel can't be locked down. The gospel can be quarantined. The gospel can't be chained, Lord God. And Lord God, we declare... Lord God, na sa limitation namin na ito, Lord God, yung unlimited power mo ay magmamanifest. And we declare today, Lord God, that the gospel will spread in the Philippines and the gospel will spread in the whole world as you commission your Christians to do the good work in this time. Salamat po, Panginoon. We are receiving your anointing. We are receiving your favor. We are receiving your presence to be with us. We are so excited. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Kung hindi mo pa tinatanggap si Jesus Christ bilang iyong Panginoon at tagapagligtas, now is the time to do it. I mean, the gospel is about salvation from 
peril from hell and and Jesus Christ died to save you from hell lahat po tayo ay nagkasala at lahat na nagkasala sa Panginoon ay papuntang impyerno and so Jesus Christ died for all of us para tayo ay iligtas sa bibig ng impyerno accept Jesus Christ in your life and you will be saved at gawin mo starting today lalakad ka kasama niya susunod ka sa lahat ng mga sinasabi niya gagayahin mo siya and you will never be the same again Amen tanggapin mo si Jesus Christ ngayon sudan mo ako sa panalangin sabi mo Jesus tinatanggap kita bilang aking Panginoon at tagapagligtas patawarin mo ako sa aking mga kasalanan tinatalikuran ko ito at simula ngayon tinatanggap kita sa aking buhay at simula ngayon Panginoon ako ay maglilingkod sa iyo tinatanggap ko po ang buhay na walang hanggan na pinagkakaloob mo sa akin at ang pangakong pagbabagong buhay bagong puso bagong pag-iisip at kapangyarihan mula sa banal na Espiritu Santo para ako'y lumakad sa kalinisan mahal kita Panginoon you are the best thing that ever happened to me In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Taas po natin ang mga kamay natin. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make His face shine upon you and give you peace. I declare protection from COVID-19 at anumang galaw ng kalaban. I declare Psalms, Psalms 91 to happen in your life. I declare provision Okay, to be poured out upon you and your family. I declare transformation to happen in your homes. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Ang gawin po natin ngayon, go in, in groups, go in circles, talk about what we've talked about. Amen. And, and I want you to discuss as a family how you will demonstrate and share the gospel to your mga kamag-anaks and ka-Facebook friends and communities. God bless you po.